Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me, as always. How are you doing? Alex, how are you? I'm pretty good, man. Yeah? On a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> I'm sitting at about at a 7.8. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to check back in with the end of the episode. Okay. We're going to see where that number's at. All right. Just in case you were wondering, this is the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast, where... We discussed the previous week in gaming, maybe topic two. Check us out on all of our podcast services and YouTube every Friday. If you enjoy content, please go over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. Help us out over there. Show your support. Give us a buck. Give us five bucks. Various tiers that you can enjoy. If you're a free filler, don't worry. We are too. Five stars everywhere. Give us the likes. Give us the retweets. Give us the, the, the SoundClouds, the Androids. <laughs> give us give us the give us the apples. Give us the half bitten apples. I, I assume Apple gives out. Alex, we're going to into the week. Mm. It's a little big week. Yeah. Not a lot of news stories, but a lot of big stories. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go over this Blizzard thing. We're going to go over PS5. Mm. But before we get into any of that, Alex, I have a question. What's up? What man? you been playing? You know what I've been playing, man. I some, don't think I have. I guess I'm Destiny, Destiny 2, 2, man. Nothing but Destiny 2. Great. Shadow Keep, man. <laughs> Just Shadow keeps so good. Yeah. Right. We, uh, I've hit nine forty-two. Yeah. I'm at, at I'm at nine twenty-five. Nine twenty. Right yeah. behind me. Yeah. Right behind me. Yeah. Enjoying the game. Yeah. Again. We're grinding. Yep. What's the next big game you're looking forward to? Uh, right. We've been playing Destiny. We've been raiding. We've been Outer Worlds. Night falling. Yeah. Outer Worlds. I think game. that's next. Bef- <laughs> right. Well, that's right that's, before Call of Duty. I no, think it's the same day. Same day. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we got Call of Duty Ooh. and yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same day. So, yeah. And that's about two weeks from now. Exactly two weeks from now, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of recording and as of listening. Alex, What's let's up? get into the news. Blizzard sets off backlash for penalizing Hearthstone Gamer in Hong Kong. This has been an ever-developing story that's happened throughout the week. We're going to start at the beginning. It's going to be a journey we're going to take. I'm going to grab your hand, Alex. Let me I'm also going to grab the, v- the listener's hand. And we're going to slowly follow this story. I feel I feel like I'm a kid at like a Disney or whatever. Disney? Oh, so like, yeah, I, yeah. like I want to run. Because you want to run that way. Yeah. But your parents like, you're going to get stolen. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like that kid that has the, uh, the, the, the little the vest leash. with the leash. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, like, no, when you try to, when you try to run, mm-hmm. it just pulls Boop. you back. Yep. <laughs> not a fan of it. It makes him look more doggish than usual. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you're like, ah. I'm, it's useful. Yeah. But you should probably just n- carry him at that point. <laughs> it's funny because I kind of want to buy one. <laughs> Me just, too. I, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Blizzard faces backlash following esports player ban. After Blizzard Entertainment banned professional esports player Blitz Chung from competitions for 12 months over his support for Hong Kong's pro democracy protests, there is a growing movement in the gaming community to boycott the company's decision. This is over on NPR by a Polio Vilcidia. <laughs> I just rammed right through that one. <laughs> Last Sunday, Blitz Chung, whose real name is Wow Chung, I'm just going to blow through that as well, appeared on a Twitch broadcast after playing in a Hearthstone tournament. Blitz Chung ended his remarks by reciting the popular Hong Kong protest slogan, quote, liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our times, end quote. At the time, he was wearing a gas mask and dark goggles, evoking the gear activists have worn during months of street protests. For his actions, Blitz Chung, who lives in Hong Kong, has handed a one-year ban from Blizzard's tournaments. The company also rescinded his 2019 winnings, said to be $10,000. Nathan, Nathan Admirable Zamara, a, co- a commentator, yeah, commentator uh, for the Hearthstone Grandmasters tournament, announced Thursday that he was stepping down from his role as a caster on the Hearthstone broadcast team. Quote, in Hearthstone, good strategic play involves making the right choice, even if that choice will sometimes cost you. You think about the range of possibilities from the other side. Zamara said in a tweet, with the hand you're dealt, you make the best choice you can, even if the foreseeable outcomes hurt. That doesn't mean you should make worse choices. It means do the right thing, even if you pay the price. Zamar is the second esports caster to step down from the position. Brian Kibler also announced his departure, saying he will not be a smiling face on the camera that tactically endorses this decision. Two of their colleagues released statements denouncing Blizzard's action, but it seems they will continue to cast the Grandmasters tournament. And another active celebrity from Blitzchung, a user claiming to be a Blizzard employee, posted a photo to Reddit showing people holding umbrellas, a reference to 2014's Hong Kong umbrella movement, as they con- uh, congr- 
congregated around an orc statue on the comp campus at Blizzard's headquarters in California. Uh, I will now read the tweet. Not everyone at Blizzard agrees with what happened. Both the Think Globally and Every Voice Matters values have been covered up by the incensed employees this morning. Players are, uh, are also finding ways to protest Blizzard during a Hearthstone Collegiate <laughs> Champs match, which was organized by esports company Tespa. In partnership with Blizzard, players from the American University held up a sign that said, quote, free Hong Kong, boycott Blizz, end quote. Casey Chambers, one of the players on the team, said that they, at minimum, expected to ban and retaliation for their actions, but they were not given one by TESPA uh, officials. The team was scheduled to compete in another game next week, but Chambers told NPR they intend to forfeit the tournament in solidarity with Blitzchung. Quote, this shows Blizzard's hypocrisy in how it treats different regions. The team said it in a statement. They are hesitant to suppress free speech when it happens in America on an English language stream, but will throw casters and players' livelihoods under the bus if they're from Hong Kong or Taiwan. Over the past week, gaming fans have found creative ways to show their support for Le Chung in Hong Kong. Some have created pro Hong Kong fan art of Mei, a Chinese character in the Blizzard game Overwatch, in an attempt to have the Blizzard ban the game in China. And a look at the official Twitch stream show users have been spamming a <coughs> ping pong paddle in the chat, accompanied by the sentence, spam this pong to free Hong Kong. Dang. That's a really good one. Yeah. Gamers aren't the only ones in incest by a Blitz Chung ban. U.S. Senator Marco Rubio and Ron Wyden tweeted statements denouncing Blizzard's actions, saying it had given in to the capital influence from China. As we reported earlier this week, Tencent Holdings Limited, a Chinese conglomerate, owns a 5% stake in Blizzard's parent company. <clears throat> Blizzard Entertainment and Blitz Dog have not responded as of the writing of this one. It's crazy stuff that's happening. That is insane. That is a lot to digest. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. run in, just in case you don't know what's going on with Hong Kong, because you're a busy, busy man running around in New York. I'm just going to put New York there. Yeah. Maybe you're G busy. Uh, Jim around. over there in New York. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. So hey. this is sticking with NPR. Okay. What's happening in Hong Kong? For months, Hong Kong streets have seethed with discontent. Scenes from the semi-autonomous region show protesters, sometimes numbering in the hundreds of thousands, many wearing surgical masks and carrying umbrellas that come to signify resistance. The images are astonishing, and the issues that set the protest in motion are complex. So here's a primer breaking down the major players, why they have poured into the streets and respond so far from China. So why are the protests happening? Well, the latest spam of discontent traces to February, when members of Hong Kong's government proposed an extradi uh, extradition bill known as the Fugitive Offenders and Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters Legislation Amendment Bill 2019. Goodness. That's a mouthful, isn't it, Alex? Mm-hmm. That measure would expand the range of countries where suspected offenders may be sent. Below the list of those of which Hong Kong has mutual extradition agreements under the bill's provisions, the region would be able to extradite suspects to other companies on a case-by-case -case basis, with the chief executive holding significant power over which cases apply. Notably, this opens the door to extradition to mainland China, which has sought greater control over the former British colony since it restored to Beijing in 1997 as a special administrative region with its own independent court system. Quote, there have been a May number of serious uh, crime cases in which the culprits have absconded to other ju uh, jurisdictions to elude justice, end quote. The region's Secretary Bureau explained in a paper published in February to illustrate the point the, Secretary, uh, the security officials cited a recent incident in which a Hong Kong resident suspected of murdering someone in Taiwan could not be extradited to, to Taiwan to stand trial for murder. Quote, as a result, the officials expanded the court of Hong Kong could only handle the suspected money laundering offenses committed by the suspect in Hong Kong, leading to a widespread public concern. Goes into that, we're going to skip a little bit to if it's suspended. Uh, the bill was actually suspended. So why should the protest continue? That's partly because the bill is not formally dead. Lam has refrained from withdrawing its entirety from the legislative process that has raised suspicions among its critics, and it could be revived. And these critics have staged multiple major rallies since Lam's suspension of the bill. Who are the major players involved? Well, that's at the heart of the Tomo is Lam, who was elected chief executive in 2017 by the pro-Beijing committee in Hong Kong. The chief executive is determined not by a general vote, but by the group of about 1,200 people consisting of prominent officials and members of the Legislative Council. Again, a lot to unpack. Yeah. We're going to also move on to the League of Legends esports. Oh, goodness. Before we hit that. Mm-hmm. 
what is your thoughts so far? Uh, why? It's a lot, right? I mean, like, this whole, or, I mean, I feel like this whole ordeal that's going on, I mean, it could, a lot of this stuff can be avoided. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of this is an unforced error on Blizzard's part. Mm-hmm. Right? They didn't yeah. need to have such a severe, obvious begging to China mm-hmm. as this was, right? If maybe they made the case that this platform is not meant for any political stances, mm-hmm. they make something like that clear. We're going to take 10% of your winnings. You're also suspended for two games. Yeah. No one would have reported on that. Maybe you got Kotaku making an article. Hey, mm-hmm. that's weird. And then we all move on. Yeah. This man gets banned for a year. He's never coming back. There's no yeah. way this man ever comes back to Hearthstone now. So you basically ban him for life. They took all the prize money. Take 10 grand from this man, which I'm yeah. sure he knew that was going to happen. So he he, sure he, want, he had a platform and he made some for it. Yep. Now, this is, that happened about a, almost a week ago. And we have yet to hear an official statement <clears throat> from Blizzard. And BlizzCon is in two weeks. I think it's two weeks. Two, eh, I think it might be three weeks. Wild, wild. They get that. Um, they get that George Lopez low rider, and they're just riding now. They're just riding yeah. low, super low, hoping no one looks over. Like, oof, yeah. don't look at us. <clears throat> Let's go back to the League of Legends thing. <laughs> League of Legends esports players asked to not discuss sensitive topics on air. This is over on IGN by Matt Kim. Following a recent controversy where Blizzard banned for uh, professional Hearthstone for a year, we just went over that. In a statement published on League of Legends official esports Twitter account, Riot's global head of League of Legends esports, John Needham, issued a long statement on expected player conduct ahead of the League of Legends World Championship group stage. Quote, as a general rule, we want to keep our broadcast focused on the game, the sport, and the players. We serve fans from many different countries and cultures, and we believe this opportunity comes with the responsibility to keep personal views on sensitive issues, political, religious, or otherwise, separate. Therefore, we have reminded our casters and pro players to refrain from discussing any of these topics on air. Yikes. So, ahead of all this, League of Legends, Riot mm-hmm. Games, makes mm-hmm. it clear that they do not want casters or anyone involved in the actual tournament to speak on this. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, Riot is owned 100% uh, by a Chinese-owned company. Mm-hmm. So, they have reason to, oh, yeah. of course, not want to bring up anything about no. China. They don't want anything popping up on them. Now, I think we've kind of glossed over the whole reason everyone's worried to anger China, right? So if you do know, China is a authoritarian, totalitarian, one-party system. That means basically whoever's in charge is in charge 100%. And it doesn't work like well, there's check and balances here. If they want to make a rule in China, they most likely can. So they ban many, many things in China. Movies, TV shows, mm-hmm. etc. There's a very, very funny picture that's always banned in China of Zhao Ping, I believe his name is, as Winnie the Pooh. For some reason, he really doesn't like being depicted as Winnie the Pooh, but people always make the pictures and send it to him. It's hilarious. That's crazy. Anyways, <laughs> the, uh, uh, they'll ban anything as fast as it is because uh, they basically judge what is correct for their people to look at, right? So, for instance, it's gone as small as a game can't show a skeleton or... <laughs> mm-hmm guns in certain matters Mm. this specifically is against china's belief in getting back hong kong to them basically because they want hong kong again just like they did years ago they want hong kong back so anything resisting to the hong kong will probably get banned or block you from the market now if you don't know china has one billion people Say that again. One God. billion people. That's more than all. Almost, uh, I believe that's more than the entire um, North American population. One billion people. So no one wants that market taken away from them. So that's why you see all these companies, right? I read that there is the NBA thing, all that. Everyone's bending the knee to China to <laughs> hopefully not get banned from there because they want half what? If there's a billion people, let's just say there's 500 million men. They, they want that market. Of course, the, the women market, I don't know how viable the, uh, the women market is, but they, of course, want access to the millions of men there. North America has 362.4 million. Yeah, so that's nothing. It's a third. It's a third compared to China. <laughs> that's crazy. It's insane. That's a lot of people. Yeah. So we've gone over this. We've mm. gone all that. 
what how does blizzard get out of this about 100 foot hole they put themselves in do they what do you think they do alex Mm. you're talking about right right i don't see uh, i don't think i I think i think blizzard right right just made a statement say don't talk yeah no i think they're they're gonna try to stay safe and just like yeah no we'll stay out of this so what about blizzcon what happens at BlizzCon? Do they come out and have a big thing? Hey, I don't. They bring that. out Blitz Chung and say, "Hey, sorry." I don't think they'll do anything. You don't think they'll do anything? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, oof. Mm-hmm. That is relying on the twenty-four hour news cycle very heavily. Do you know what that is? Mm-mm. So the twenty-four hour news cycle speaks to a if an event happens, if mm-hmm. you wait long enough, the event will eventually move to something else. Right? You can see this in many things like gun control, things like that. If you wait long enough, the conversation will stop and move to something else. Yeah. I think Blizzard is probably hoping for that. <clears throat> and I wouldn't be surprised if they've hired people to help them, uh, some sort of PR company, help them get out of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they've, I'm sure there's crisis organizations or something that they'd pay to help them out of <clears throat> complete terrible situations. So I'm sure they're doing that. They might be just waiting for the perfect time, maybe. I don't know. But we have yet to get at a statement which is very, very, very surprising and very showing. I do not like I'm seeing these American companies bend over to a Chinese rule. Mm. I do understand. I did see a point, counterpointing, because originally I said, why is anyone making videos that these people make political statements? Who cares? Let them talk if they yeah. talk, whatever. Yeah. But someone did make a point that I, I was watching something, and they made the point. It was like, well, their platform isn't for political statements. Mm-hmm. The only reason people are liking this one is because we all agree that's a good thing we want hong kong to free yeah li- democracy and all that's good what if this guy i'm sure we'd be having a very different conversation if this gentleman went up there and said trump 2020 <clears throat> for instance right yeah or something that people wouldn't like and i'm sure everyone would mean not like him right so mm-hmm. i understand that part and we should probably i i would probably see the point of being like well, all right we don't bring politics into anything they do it, like if blizzard made a rule it's like hey you can't talk politics period zero let none you talk yeah. about the game game's over you don't talk anymore mm. so i get I, I i understand that point of view i don't i'm not saying that everyone should talk about politics as soon as you get in there you get asked tank all right who do you support what do you, <laughs> say? you know <laughs> like i i get that i'm not saying that i'm just saying the entire fact that you are obviously catering to a authoritarian government that you mm. are not from you're from America, <laughs> where you made all of your money originally. That leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to plan to do. I just don't feel like they're. I don't think they're going to do anything. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, someone listening to this be like, "No, that's crazy." I don't think that's crazy at all. Mm. I think relying on everyone forgetting and eventually not saying anything. Yeah, might be the might be the case, and you just at BlizzCon try and piece it together. I don't know. Mm. Very curious on what happens. I'm sure they are very um, uh, upset that this was so yeah. ill timed. They have BlizzCon in yeah. a few weeks, and Overwatch comes out on Switch Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sure ever. I'm sure no one's buying that game now, and if whoever does, I mean. Yeah, like no, nothing yeah. down on those people but well they probably don't even if they do they probably don't know what no no I, i'm the vast majority of people don't know what's going on yeah it's which no harm to them yeah not everyone can know everything but just hopefully during blizzcon that nothing comes to like ahead ahead or like you know like like not like a riot you know riot what? but yeah, like yeah no i understand like you don't want anyone to get hurt yeah i don't think i don't hope hopefully because you know not. there are there's, there's, of course yeah, there's, there's people that, 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 get, do that. I, I hope not and i don't think we're I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll have plenty of security. Yeah. So, um, but, but I don't think we're. Hopefully, yeah. we're not at we'll, that. Hopefully, we have rational. We'll people. see what happens at BuzzCon. We will. <laughs> we will. Let's move on to a little lighter topic, Alex. Sony reveals PS5 release date window, control details, official name, and more. This is over on Gamespot.com by an Oscar Deus. Amadeus. 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 Remember that song? Yeah. Uh, it reminded me of that. Oh, my day. <laughs> By the way, the guy messaged me. He was just asking about the raid, if I was good. I said, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was like, are you still up for it in two hours? I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's weird that he asked about it. Yeah. I guess maybe. Why wouldn't we be? <laughs> well, I remember, I, I th- am I like the uh, the only one out of that group that's not in the clan? Oh, is, he, is it Nick? Uh, Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's probably like, who? Yeah, he just said, you're good for the raid in two, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Whatever. Right. Cool. We'll see you then. 
Earlier this year, we unexpectedly got the first details about Sony's next generation console plans. Once again, the company has shared more in somewhat unceremonious fashion, confirming the system's name and when it comes out. It's officially called PlayStation 5. Shocking, right? <laughs> and its release date will fall somewhere in the holiday 2020 period. While there's still no word on how the PS5's price will be, Sony did also share the first details on new features available in its control, at least for now, not yet called the DualShock 5, and more about discs that uses ray tracing support, SSD, UI features, and other aspects of the system. I don't think it's going to be called the DualShock 5. Why? Uh, because there's, there, or there was, I don't know if there was a rumor or they they said they were going, but they're getting, they're trying to get rid of the DualShock, the rumbles in the controller. They're trying to put the things. The haptic, right? The haptic that they have yeah. in the Switch controllers. Somewhere around here. Um, here, I'll start on the top and I'm sure we'll get there. So they'll so. call it what? The haptic one? <laughs> it's not the five. So. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. One of our goals with Next Generation is to deepen the feelings of immersion <laughs> when you play games, and we had the opportunity with our new controller to reimagine how the sense of touch can add to that immersion. To that end, there are two key innovations with the PlayStation 5 new controller. First, we're adapting haptic feedback to replace the, quote, rumble tech. Mm-hmm. found in the controller since the fifth generation of consoles with haptics you can truly feel the broader range of feedback so crashing through a wall in a race car feels much different than making a tackle on the football field you can even get a sense of variety of textures while running through fields of grass or plodding pl- through mud interesting yeah are I'm you wondering, excited for that i want to see what it what it means because yeah they said that what the, the joy cons have haptics Is joy cons have a form of haptic feedback okay. But it's me- it's more of a it's just feature a, I mean, rather than... It's just a than... vibration to me. <laughs> so, like, I'm wondering, yeah. like, let's well, say... You have to play specific games. Because okay. there's one game where you, you where you feel ice, cub- ice cubes mm. and you have to transfer it from one Joy-Con to the other. Mm. You will feel That's the jo- cool. Joy-Cons hit your hands. So it is very weird huh, in that weird. way. Yeah, but I I think it's meant for game to game. Yeah, like, I, I'm wondering... It sounds like this one's going to be more built in rather than yeah. an option. Well, I'm wondering, like, like for example, like, going through the mud or something. Like, let's right. say you're, dri- you're driving through dirt, so gravel, okay. and you can feel the rumble. Right. And if you get into mud, it'll 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 get like you could feel it mm-hmm. actually getting like stuck through mm-hmm. mud or something like I'm yeah. like, that interesting cool. I'm, i want to feel i need to feel that this is something yeah. where it's like people can describe it as much as you want you gotta feel it to know if you like it mm-hmm. the second innovation is somewhat is something we call adaptive <clears throat> triggers which can have incorporated into trigger buttons l2 r2 which the developers can program the resistance of the triggers so that you feel the tactile sensation of drawing a bow and arrow or Accelerating an off-road vehicle through rocky terrain in combination with the haptics this can produce a powerful experience that better simulates various actions. Game creators have started to receive early versions of the new controller, and we can't wait to see where their imagination goes and with these features at their disposal. Sony shared more details on the PS5 interview with Wire. Similar to how it revealed the first PS5 information earlier this year, the company reassured fans, for example, that the hard drive seen in current-gen consoles is out and faster, more efficient solid-state drive is in. So we're going to go over everything in a second. Very quick. What's up with Wired? Getting all these exclusives. Good for them. Mm -hmm. I'm curious on what they got going on. I wonder if Wired was like, hey, you want some money? You tell us all your PS5 stuff? Sure. Yeah, right. A PS5 will include a disk drive for physical games and 4K Blu-rays. PS5 discs will have a capacity of 100 gigabytes. Game installation is mandatory, but the console will allow you to just install a multiplayer campaign, for example, or install the entire game and then delete the single-player portion once you're done. That's cool. That's really cool. I didn't yeah. know that. That's yeah. really cool. The controller doesn't have a name yet, but contains an improved speaker, USB-C connectivity, and a larger capacity battery. That's cool. Yeah. There is ray tracing acceleration in the GPU hardware, says Mark Cerny. Shout out to Mark Cerny. That is a very brilliant man. I love hearing his tech talks. Like When he goes mm. into talking about his tech, it's awesome. The new UI will allow you to see more details on what you can play at any time, as well as more of what your friends are doing. Blue Point Games, the studio behind remakes such as Shadow Colossus and Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection, is working on a PS5 game that says it is, quote, big. Oh, man. Hmm, interesting. Suikoden? So I like uh, Suikoden? Oh. No, it's not Suikoden. But it'd be <laughs> awesome, though. <laughs> um, it's funny how um, Shadow of the Colossus and, Ch- and Uncharted have already gotten uh, uh, remakes. So this is, this is like a re-remake. 
Well, no, no, no. He's, that's the people who made it. So they're just saying like, oh, the oh, people who made Shadow gotcha. Colossus okay. and Charlie. Yeah, they, okay. they're the ones. They're the behind the actual uh, remake. Behind. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Blue I Point thought they were like, they're going to do it again. No, and I'm like, gonna, we're going to re, re, remake this game. <laughs> <laughs> for Shadow Colossus, that'd be about the fifth time it was released. So nothing new for them. Yeah, it's just about. Excited for the solid straight drive. Excited for this. I'm interested in the triggers. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that triggers. sounds cool that I can feel the 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 pull of a bow that seems i very feel like cool. that's what they try oh no because no, i was gonna say i was thinking maybe it's like the configuration like what they did with uh the xbox the, the, uh, yeah the elite controller no, I, get it, I get it yeah Wait. where you can feel the rumbles in your fingers kind of yeah i know i know what you mean yeah i i see it is in sort of like that but a very different of yeah um but god ps5 disc will have capacity of 100 gigs yeah 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 i do really like that if you want to, you can just install multiplayer. If not, you can do Yeah, that. I was reading really that the cool. other can, day, and I was like, you can cut that's it cool. I know a lot of people who have storage issues, so this should help them a lot. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Knowing that we have all this new information, IGN did put up a very cool kind of snippet, putting one-to-one Scarlet and PS5. So this is uh, IGN at Jonathan Dornbush. So for PS5 and Scarlet, we have a release date of both holiday 2020. Price, we still don't know. Alex, what's the price? Five hundred for both, I think five hundred for both. Yeah, five hundred bucks. Yep. Both 500, of them. Yep. Capable of playing. Oh yeah. So disc drive. Yes, for both of them. Video output: four K, one hundred twenty hertz refresh rate, eight K mm-hmm. support for the PS Five, and uh, native four K up to one hundred twenty frames, eight K support for the Xbox. So mm-hmm. basically the same thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are just saying the similar things in different ways. Yeah. Um, both will have a solid straight drive. Um, uh, PlayStation will have a solid state drive. Xbox will have a new generation SSD. We don't know yeah, what that is. They were, I'm they, yeah, they were cre- it. yeah, they're create they were creating one. Yeah, I assume they're making it. So that's why we don't know yeah. what it is. I assume PlayStation is probably getting one from AMD mm. or something. It's crazy because they have the both they they both of them have the the CPU and GPU is the same. Yeah, very yeah. Exactly the only thing that's different the is that the PlayStation looks... has 3D audio. That's it. That's the only difference. Well. Xbox already has 3D audio, so I don't know. I oh, was good curious point. So, yeah, because of the. Um, the, uh, what is it called? Like, is that news? Doesn't PlayStation have 3D audio? I don't know. I thought that was just something they might have just tacked on. I, I, I thought that was interesting that they put that there. CPU, custom AMD Zen 2, 8 core, both Xbox, PlayStation 5. GPU, custom AMD, Radeon, RD, and a Navi supports ray tracing 3D audio on both Xbox and PS4. Again, these are the same thing, so I assume they do the exact same things. One thing um, on PlayStation, that doesn't show the RAM. Yeah, they probably didn't want to talk about it. Mm, so, I'm wondering if maybe they're adding more. I think RAM. they're. I think they're trying to, um, yeah. because it, I heard a story that three months. I think it was three or four months before PS4 release, they um, tacked on like a ten or fifteen percent upgrade to RAM right mm. before release, which is crazy. But they were able to do it right before release. I wonder if so, they go I'm higher curious. than GDR6. I don't know. That'd be interesting because mm. GDDR GDDR six is pretty fast already. So well, because um, I think PS four was GDDR four. I think should be four. Yeah, I think sounds familiar. Yeah, but uh, hey, they already announced their RAM, so I guess the, yeah. they have the confidence. Cloud storage. They already have cloud storage. They're gonna have cloud storage. Mm-hmm. So, um, this says to be announced. I'm sure both of them have backwards compatibility. PlayStation will PlayStation five will support PlayStation four games and PlayStation VR. Xbox One supports, of course, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and accessories. Not fully confirmed, but we know the newest Elite controller works on yeah. the uh, newest Xbox. Yeah. Streaming game service, remote play on PlayStation, Project X Cloud on the Xbox, of course. I'm, wait- I'm still waiting on that email. Yeah. For yeah, the yeah, beta. Yeah. For the beta. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited to see how that goes. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that PlayStation finally gave them a 4k blu-ray player yes because <laughs> ps4 pro surprisingly did not have yeah, a still because you can stream one. the 4k but you can't play 4k blu-ray players right yeah, or yeah. excuse me they're like the movies which you're is, right well you can stream it yeah you can stream 4k oh i didn't know you no no, no yeah it. yeah you can stream 4k on mm-hmm. a ps4 pro but mm-hmm. you just can't play like the movies like the oh. discs they didn't have a 4k blu-ray player oh okay yeah i, I, I just which is crazy yeah, yeah. I just thought it upscaled everything. Yeah, so like, let's say somebody bought, had gave you a 4K Blu-ray player, or excuse me, a four a movie like, yeah. that's 4K, and uh, you put it in place. Yeah, you want to be able just to goes, play. It. I don't know what this is. You would have to play. You would have to play the regular Blu-ray one. Wow. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Yeah. What gets? What 
out of all of this gets you the most excited, right? Because mm. for me, it's that RAM. It's that SSD because everyone says S- that solid state drive is it makes up everything and so fast. It's gonna make it ridiculous. Um, I guess I've always I'm, I've always been a, a graphics guy. So, so you're I guess for that, that graphics card. Yeah, that yeah. graphics card, man. Mm-hmm. I always I like always everything make everything look popping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You like colors, saturation is yep. what you want. Like, dude, you you saw where the first time I got my TV, I sit there for an hour, an hour and a half, just mm-hmm. messing with settings. I'm like back and forth. I'm like, all right, this one. All right, now this one. Let's get that color to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, contrast maybe ninety, ninety six. <laughs> I'm sure someone's like Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is over on Forbes. A big one. Apple's App Store may have just leaked Fortnite's new map for Chapter Two. Oh, this again over on Forbes by Paul Tassi. It won't be a new season of Fortnite without some sort of leak, but with many speculating that season eleven will bring an entirely new map. Potential confirmation is that is very big deal. Apparently, the Italian app store has leaked an image of what is called Fortnite Chapter 2 with an image that appears to be an unfamiliar brand new map. In the image, we can see Fortnite characters uh, surveying a new landscape, an unfamiliar build-up area in the distance, what appears to be boats racing around the water. I also see a lighthouse in the distance there. At the time of this writing, the image has been removed, of course, but not before it was captured by eagle-eyed fans. I like that, eagle-eyed fans. Mm -hmm. Like, Like, all you hear is... Like in the distance. Oh, like an eagle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the call. The call. Yeah. I'm not about to try that. <laughs> if this is true. <laughs> and Fortnite Chapter 2 is getting a brand new map, it would be no great surprise to players at this point. All of Season 9 has essentially been a farewell tour for the current map. With separate bringing back old zones and areas, the final loading screen of the season is Fortnite characters waving goodbye to the Battle Pass. And a big event to, uh, is planned for Sunday. It's quite literally called The End. That's scary. <laughs> it's literally called the end. I wonder what it's. Ha- I wonder what story wise is gonna happen. Like it's everything just blow up and then you just move to a new place. I, that's what I'm wondering. Maybe maybe we're just saying goodbye to that one map and gave it a fresh map because I don't know if they'll do a Fortnite two. But I wonder if this no, really counts as it. Fortnite. You wouldn't need to do a Fortnite two. It would just yeah. be Fortnite forever because you just keep updating it. I yeah. we're we're moving past sequels for online games and anyways. just adding then just add I mean, destiny God, 2 i think is a yeah. good example so like they could have made destiny 3 I mean, if they really see, wanted to but i mean you see how, how long destiny overwatch 2. has been out for i mean they're now they're talking about a they second still one. don't have crossplay that's a good point take that blizzard with your hong kong's <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> uh ninja is apparently a believer i don't know why this is in the article but <laughs> they put ninja is a believer and a, he has a ninja's tweet ninja's a main fortnite player man he, he likes uh, yeah a good point i guess uh, if if ninja liked this uh podcast i guess i'd tweet about it too <laughs> uh mike yabara over uh that works at xbox is leaving after 20 years at Microsoft, it's time for my next adventure. It's been a great ride at Xbox, and the future is bright. Thanks to everyone at Team Xbox. I'm extro- incredibly proud of what we've accomplished, and I wish you the best. More soon on what's next for me. Mikey Barr, if you don't know, has quite a reputation there. Again, 20 years. Uh, he was corporate price, uh, vice president of gaming and worked closely with the Xbox Insider program. It is unclear what he's doing at this time, but we know he's moving on to something he really likes. Good for him. Good for him. Do you know this Mikey Bar gentleman? I've I've heard about him. Yeah, me too. I've heard about him. I followed him on Twitter, so I saw this and was like, mm. "Whoa, you leaving, man?" Yeah. Very good. Uh, good for him. Uh, on to Whoa. good things, I'm sure. It's crazy because on his Twitter, I didn't even, I didn't know this, but Activision explains why Call of Duty Modern Warfare needs a hundred and seventy five gigs of storage. Go ahead, click on it. Tell me why. Tell me why. I'll do, uh, you you load that up. I'll get into since you brought up Call of Duty. Segway. Go ahead. Call of Duty Mobile sees best first week downloads of any mobile game. This is over on Games Industry Not Biz by Rebecca Valentine. She's everywhere. everywhere. Call of Duty Mobile has seen the best first week launch by downloads of any mobile game ever, with an estimated over a hundred million downloads and around seventeen point seven million. In player spending this comes from sensor tower which notes that if surpassed the recent record holder mario kart tour which brought in 90 million downloads in the first week which is hilarious because they just hit that <laughs> that was like last week mm. first uh, additional comparison PUBG's mobile's first week saw 28 million downloads while fortnite's app store only launch brought in 22.5 it's worth knowing that PUBG mobile was made through a partnership with tencent and PUBG corp while tencent hold- also holds a minority stake in epic games 
Through a champion in downloads and still surpassing Mario Kart Tour, which brought in 12.7 million in its first week, games such as Fire Emblem Heroes, 28.2 million, may have a better first week revenue totals. Fortnite didn't even come close in its first week with 2.3. Darn. You know, hmm? I'd be really upset if I made two point three million dollars. Right? <laughs> Call of Duty Mobile Saw. Darn, I just, I almost hit that two point four. <laughs> almost did, almost did. Call, Call of Duty Mobile Saw fifty six percent of its downloads on iOS, forty four percent on Android. It was most popular in the U.S. with almost seventeen point three million downloads, followed by India and Brazil. I downloaded it, uh, dude. I've had so many people talk to me, talk to me about this thing. Mm-hmm. So many people like, hey, I've been playing the mobile game, and I'm like, how is it? He's like, it's really fun. It's what you expect a mobile game on your mobile phone is, yeah. but they like it a lot. Apparently, yeah. they're loving it. And yeah, it's a, it a actually runs really smooth. It. Does it? Yeah. Does it run smooth for a mobile game, or does it run smooth? It runs smooth. Oh, you paused though. You paused. All well, right. because I have to think about it because <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I know I'm messing around. And so, why does uh, why do they okay. justify 170? How? So, first off, how do they justify 170? First off, games? okay. So I looked at, it and it's for compu- uh, It's for PC. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's the that's the requirement on PC. So this is over at a PC Gamer. Do you think there's a tech guy that's like, can you just compress the files? It, I'll do it oh, for you. The, just send me them. Oh, thank God, I hope. <laughs> but um, it's by Sean Prescott at PC Gamer. Yeah. All right. It says, uh, yeah, the system requirements are here, but one part really stands out. It's an it's an updated article. Yeah. Activision has updated the model for system requirements. Post to explain why it's asking for 175 gigs of real <laughs> estate on your hard drive. Jesus 175 God. gigs is the storage space we recommend players keep available in order to download the post-launch content we'll be bringing to Modern Warfare. At launch, initial download will be smaller, <laughs> the page now says. <laughs> it's Afor- 174, okay? <laughs> right. Unfortunately, there's no indication as to exactly how much smaller the initial download will be. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love that. Hey, guys, it's going to be smaller. How smaller? What? <laughs> Just one gig. <laughs> as the minimum recommend, uh, recommended spec still calls for 175 gigs of drive space. I've emailed Activision to ask for an update on here. <laughs> Yeah, it says, that's really funny. So Thank you, Activision. Say, for so that. here, minimum requirements on PC. So if any of you have a crazy PC, you need minimum, or actually here, I'll do recommended. Okay. Just so you know, you want to make sure it runs good. <laughs> yeah. Recommended. Minimum win- means it will run like a toaster. <laughs> right. Recommended is OS is Windows 10 64 bit latest update. Okay. The GPUs NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. <laughs> it says dash GTX 1660. Or, Jesus. or AMD Radeon R9 390 or an RX 580 DirectX 12 compatible. Okay. I you know, uh, I, I kind of I, I understand it. some of them, but I've always been with NVIDIA. I've never understood how the, with the AMD one. So I get confused when they're like 960. Mm-hmm. Like I thought everything was like 1080 12. And, like, see, and, and I see, I, I guess there's a the difference thing? is uh, the GeForce part. Because there's NVIDIA GTX 1660, but there's also, I think, the NVIDIA oh, GeForce those are, GTX. Okay, those are so, two different ones. I okay, think, that makes sense. I don't know, unless I'm, I don't know, I might be wrong. I've seen uh, 1660s. Yeah. I don't and then the processor are. Intercore i5 2500K or AMD Risen R5 1600. It says memory is 12 gigs, so that's that's uh, RAM. You need at least yeah, 12 gigs Yeah, you need at least 12 gigs of RAM, of course. It's just crazy. That's a lot of stuff. Yikes. I can't remember I mean, my I mean, my Mac has 16 gigs of RAM, but my and, and I don't my, think it can do anything. My thing else. barely like sometimes it's just like <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's old, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I'm. <laughs> it's I really needed that laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, tr- trust me, it's gonna be smaller. How much? No. Unfortunately, <laughs> we'll be as uh, we don't we don't we can't tell you. We, we would not be taking comments at this time. Yeah. <laughs> Google's apparent plan to tackle lag on Stadia explained. This is over on IGN by Winston Gordon. That's a new name for me. Google Stadia game streaming service is a fascinating leap into the future of gaming, but in a world of varying internet speeds, restrictive ad caps, and the worrying loss of quote ownership, it has a few challenges to overcome. Stadia engineers think they can at least conquer the input lag problem with what Google calls quote negative latency. <laughs> That may sound like an oxymoron, but contrary to the memes that have already written about it, <laughs> Google, Google is it is it claiming that your on-screen character is going to actually act before you press the button <laughs> instead of your game playing itself like Lineage 2 Revolution? I, that, that's a deep cut for somebody. Whoa. I have no idea what that is. Google is just trying to close the gap between your computer and their server. It's like, oh, I know what you're going to press. You're going to press this. <laughs> the, quote, 
There's always going to be some latency in them sending the data to your machine, so they must have some solution in mind to allow them to pipeline the data, explains Garrett Cooper, a computer engineer and indie game developer speaking to IGM by sending the data to the user as fast as possible. They can help reduce some of that latency, hence the somewhat confusing quote negative latency buzzword i was why would you call it that you know people are going to be confused <laughs> yep. you know people yeah, see, are going to be just, confused I, I was laughing this is I, already confusing enough there's a, a blue box with wording and it. it's just think what? about think back to math class <laughs> <laughs> you can add a positive number to a negative number and still end up with a ne- with a net positive the negative latency only refers to the piece that google adds to the mix not the final result Look, Google Stadia is super easy to use. Just think about math. <laughs> you, all you see is everybody. Whoosh. <laughs> They're just staring at it. Like, hey, I probably read this to my wife, and she's like, I got it. Yeah, no, she'll understand. She's yeah. a teacher. Um, in other words, Stadia is the only one you when you're putting content kind of already. Just give me Stadia, and I'll try it out. This is interesting. Google makes it sound like this revolutionary tech, but input prediction is nothing new. Similar tricks date back to the days of Duke Nukem 3D World and Quake World and have been used in plenty of online games since then. Fighting game enthusiasts use a middleware like GGPO to reduce latency when playing online, and retro emulators are starting to build predictive input features to achieve a more CRT-like experience. Hmm. To Google's credit, though, 3D games have to account a lot more potential inputs than 2D retro side scrollers. Tony Cannon, the creator of aforementioned GG, GGPO middleware, explains to us how this solution compares to what Google Stadia could achieve. GGPO predicts the actions of other players in the game and computes the most likely outcome of their inputs immediately. And we're not worried that the computer is going to kill us one day. <laughs> <laughs> the, this, 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 there's a software doing this? If, the, uh, if that outcome is incorrect, it rolls back to the past to fix the error and quickly simulates forward to the new, more accurate present. I, I So all I heard from that <laughs> was Transformers... <laughs> Terminator and Back to the Future. <laughs> what? I want to read That's that. That's all again. I got from there. If that inco- if the if outcome is incorrect, it, it rolls goes- back to the past to what? fix the error. <laughs> quickly simulates forward to the new, more accurate present. I'm thinking. I feel like I'm in like a Black Mirror episode, and I just hit the <laughs> twist. That I just hit the twist of the episode, and I'm just like. <gasps> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Based on what I've read, Stadia is most likely computing many possible futures and sending them all to the client along with the current frame. If the next client input matches any one of the predictions, it can render that frame immediately, avoiding a round trip to the server. I think I get it now. So Google Stadia is a time machine. It creates a quantum loop (laughs) to bring your game much faster to you. We have created a time machine. So it seems like it makes, for instance, five screens. Okay. And each screen has a different direction. I I guess when you, let's say one of them says you press forward and hit A. Mm -hmm. If you press forward and hit A, Mm -hmm. it has that frame already up. So it just sends that straight forward instead of having to calculate yours, I guess. Mm. So it skips a step. So it auto gener- So so it's like pretty much predicting. Like so, like it has like presets to like, okay, if you're gonna press this, this is what's gonna happen. Like yeah, that? okay. It's trying to figure. But out if it what doesn't, you- and if you didn't press that, and it was something else, then it reverts back to a, the other one. Yeah, because it says like because they said they want to avoid a round trip server to the server, so they want to avoid. You hitting a button uh-huh. and it having to hit back to you, I guess, yeah, for whatever reason. Which is, it creates the lag. Right. In other words, Stadia how do Server. They, how do, okay, first off. Go ahead. How do they figure this out? Google Stadia. Sorry. Google has a lot of money. It's and just a lot people. Of time. Like, how do, mm, they have some of the smartest people, period, in the globe, and they pay them a lot of money to work in. Nothing but there. I remember they did an article. Someone did an article. It was like, Google uh, Google has an amazing workplace. Mm-hmm. Like, they showed, like, oh, they can nap here. And then they can play here. And I'm like, That's, yeah, so you don't leave. They yeah. don't want you to leave. And there's like, oh, there's buses that take you there. I'm like, yeah, so you don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, back to the article. 
In other words, Stadia servers wouldn't need to wait for your input. Your console could already have a few frames stored locally, showing you the right one as soon as you press a button. To be clear, we're speculating here, but we already know that Microsoft began testing a very similar method of predicting input years ago, and it's tested reportedly noticeably better experiences compared to typical game streaming. Quote, the problem they have to solve, says Cooper, is what to do when they predict wrong. Much like when you seek a different part of a movie on Netflix, the algorithm can't account for that and will need to repuffer. In stated terms, this probably means resetting the game state on their server on the time on your machine that you press the button and then sending you the new frames as soon as possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, when Stadia has to play catch up in this way, it could result in a de- degrade- degraded user experience. Maybe the image will get a little blurry for those few frames, or perhaps the screen might rubber band to the correct state. This correction would likely happen in a matter of milliseconds, so casual gamers may not notice, but Eagle Eye veterans could, and that alone is probably <laughs> enough to keep folks like me playing locally rendered games rather than opting into Google's streaming service. We're slowly getting into the negatives of Google Stadia because people are asking the question, and they're like, well, we have this way. It's like, well, if you have that way, then there has to be this thing happening. Yeah. Very man. curious if this all nets out positively for that. Hey, we got uh, pretty much a month exactly because isn't it November 12th? Yep. It, it, it same, doesn't have a date yet. It's oh, just November. Okay, well, I'm thinking of Disney Plus then because I thought yeah. it, they said they came out the same day. That's why I was confused. No, yeah. We don't okay. have a date yet. I think it's going to be no. 12th to the 15th. Yeah, because we, then we got about a month. Yeah, we got about a month. Yeah. It's Exciting. crazy. Exciting. Do you think this works? Google Stadia? Do you Stadium? think Google Stadia works and do you think Google sticks with it? I think that um, – <laughs> Like, it'll no. execute something, but not what they wanted. Okay. But it, eventually, it'll get. Does to this that. go the I way of Movie Pass? Stick with me. Stick with me before okay. you say something. Right. Okay. Does this go Movie Pass? Where Movie Pass revolutionized mm-hmm. theaters mm-hmm. to have this kind of easy access pass to get you into seats, but Movie Pass went away very quickly. And see, I'm... do you think Google Stadia comes? Everyone reacts to it. We get a better industry for it. And then mm. Google bow, bows out eventually. I don't think so. No? You no, think because they stick uh, with, like with MoviePass, I feel like... I'm not saying these are one-to-one. No, I'm no, just okay. giving an example. Yeah, no, I, no I think they'll stay. I think they'll try to take a lot, as much feedback as they can. Because, mm-hmm. I, I mean, they've never done this before, I don't think. Right. So I, I, I think one, per, like specifically, one someone tried to do this. I think it was called uh, On Live. So people keep talking about on live. Have you heard of that? Sounds familiar. It's basically like what Google Stadia is doing now. Okay. You pay and stream games. Okay. But this was like eight years ago. Well, it's. Uh, I think it. I think it'll be easier to do it now because that generation's everything's about streaming. Oh right. Of the course. only my the only issue is like is how good it's gonna work or how to execute it because well, of these internet situations. I think we situations. get in a similar situation with the Connect. If you remember correctly, I mm-hmm. remember reading articles and stuff. The problem with things that have alternatives, mm-hmm. for instance, with the Connect, or one of the reasons why it failed, right? Mm-hmm. My me hitting the A on my Xbox One controller will work a hundred percent of the time. When I talk to that Connect, it's not going to work a hundred percent of the time. So why would I use it? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't always use it because I know the button will work. Yeah, if the Connect doesn't work, and then eventually you just stop using the Connect every time it messes up or whatever. Yeah, I think it, I think we get in a similar situation with this where if they don't, if they're not almost a hundred percent, I have stuff that will be a hundred percent. It's in my house already, so I'll just go to that. Yeah. So I think we're in that very mm-hmm. interesting middle ground. It was like. W- could work but they have to nail this thing mm. and i guess it just depends on the technology that they're they have that they have that or that they they can do like you know that's available to them yeah well yeah i understand yeah. I, I get it i, yeah. I agree with that because i would like would look back then like with the connect and google of course is the highest probably the biggest tech yeah I, I don't, well, it, it's, it's, it's the it's biggest tech there. conglomerate it's high up there i'm probably the biggest <clears> one ever period and and of all time so i think if anyone could do it it's probably them. yeah they should be fine I feel like it'll. Uh, I feel like everybody will be skeptical at first. So like, I don't, oh no, we know people are skeptical. Yeah, yeah. So like, my I, Twitter I, feed is filled with people. Like, I feel like it's not. It's not. It's not going to do crazy good at the beginning, but then it slowly picks up until everything starts getting fixed. For example, internet caps are good, and then yeah. like games better. I don't think this like is meant for my mother my, no, 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 all these. God, no. They're not into the tech no. stuff. This, this isn't for them. It's, so I, it's, I feel like they're already not. 
they don't have a lot of people. No, it's only already. for a certain specific groups. Yeah, right. You got the unlimited internet. Period. You have to have it. Yeah, to make well, this thing that work. and then uh, people who travel a lot, like like uh, I mean, yeah, I guess I just I mean, like honestly, I'm not gonna be using it because I mean, I'm I'm here all the time. So why would yeah. why would I use that and not my Xbox? Right. Of course. So like, and also no achievements. Come on. Yeah. Right. I want an Xbox achievements. Yeah. Right. I want to get unless Google create their own achievement system. Hey, but they're not achievements though. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. And people and these trophies and stuff. Like that. Nothing's better than a nice achievement pop. Once you hear that, bleep, it's yep. like, oh, okay, I can live a little longer. <laughs> you know, when the Switch came out, I thought they would have done incorporated something. Right them. by now, right? Yeah, by like, now like, you like, thought they like do you know something. coins or, or like I know they have that reward thing when you you know every yeah, time you buy games you yeah. get coins, but like a like a like a achievement system. I'm with, shocked you get stars or coins or something. It's up like that. there with Overwatch not being crossplay. I'm shocked it's not happened yet. Yeah. I th- I mean I, f- I think they're just not doing it just because be like, why? But I mean a lot of people yeah. do like it because I mean I love it because if it, it feels like I've accomplished something because sometimes <laughs> I can't I mean sometimes I can't be these I hard think they're games, going more so for like, in-game achievements like uh, for instance in Smash Brothers they have the trophy system yeah. or whatever or the spirits whatever you want to call yeah. them. um I think that's what they're going for moving on and gadget by Mark DeAngelis Ubisoft is planning animated shows based on Watch Dogs and Far Cry. Oh, Ubisoft is no stranger to TV and movies. Its media division at Ubisoft Motion Pictures has created four seasons of Rabbit's Invasion thus far. and produ- That's still on? Jesus Christ. And produced a me- meteor <laughs> adaptation of Assassin's Creed. That's not to mention films like U- uh, UA Bowl's Far Cry and the con- controversial Prince of Persia, which are licensed from the pleasure, but the company is focusing on the small screen for now, though. And hopes to read kids and young adults. The anime series will be kinds of adaptations from titles like Watch Dogs and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Such Ubisoft a good game. is so good. Ubisoft hasn't said if Rabbids Invasion will receive a fifth season, but the kids series will soon get a one off TV special set on Mars. The Rabbit cre- uh, characters are originally from Ubisoft's Rayman series, which will be a source of a new untitled comedy series, Hungry Shark Squad. <laughs> Meanwhile, with an adaptation of the mobile game Hungry Shark. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> More power to you. On the tween side, I like that, tween. On the tween side, Ubisoft will tame its open world hacking series Watch Dogs to create an animated cyber mystery show. The concept art depicts a (laughs) uh, a middle school girl equipped with a few gadgets. Her reflection reveals a more futuristic version of the character set against a Tron-like backdrop. Interesting. Young adult gamers and plain old adult gamers too might be more interested in the adaption of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. The, 23, the 2013 game was a surreal 80s inspired romp through a world plagued by giant neon lizards controlled by an evil mega corporation. Rex. It, that is, yeah, Rex. Yeah. Its um, soundtrack by Power Glove <clears throat> is particularly awesome. The TV version <laughs> Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon vibe, will be helmed by Audi Shankar. Which is the guy who makes Netflix's Cast- Castlevania. Ooh. That's awesome. Yeah. I I have complete faith now. <laughs> you yeah. won me over. Yep. Blood Dragon will serve as a basis for a Ubisoft TV multiverse. Given mm. how wacky the game was, there are a million ways. Time travel, aliens, black magic, astral projection for unrelated characters to make their way onto the screen. Cool. Lots of viewers are sick of the hearing the term multiverse. <laughs> I'm not. It seems like right? every studio is getting into the formula. Plus, video games adaption seem particularly likely to turn out corny or just plain bad. But Ubisoft Motion Picture success with Rabbid, uh, Rabbids Invasion may be a good omen for these upcoming projects. In the meantime, gamers can look forward to other Ubisoft TV projects like Child of Light, Mythic Quest, and The Division. I've never seen that trailer for The Mythic Quest. I know. Yeah, yeah. I was like, woof, that is one of the most unfunny things I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And, it, like, I hate being, like, mean. Yeah. But, like, that Come was on. not funny. No. <laughs> I hope it, it, I hope it turns out good. D- or the PC developer thing. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, when we watched it. Uh, no, it was the E3. developer software or developer thing. It was like the, it was at E three, but it was at that uh, it's called developer something. I don't remember. Oh uh, yeah, I don't, know. I, don't, I don't remember. I don't know. Interesting. I I always like when people make new stuff. Oh yeah, especially based on games. I mean, why not try? All it? this sounds fun and good ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested in, of course, the Audi Shankar. Of course, I'm, yeah, I want to watch. Yeah. I definitely want to watch that. I'm curious on where it's going to be. There was no mention of where any of this is. If it's no. on Netflix, yeah. Hulu, no, whatever. I think I, I mean they're just doing the ideas now. I'm, I'm yeah. sure scripts are still being made and stuff. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. So I mean, true. they still got to get a whole story before they go to someone and be like, "Hey, we want to make this. Can you you want to buy it?" Mm-hmm. So Netflix they, will buy anything. So they hey, man. just ask them once. Witcher, I'm waiting for Witcher. I want to try that oh, out. God, I completely forgot all about, all hey, about that's that. That's next. I think that's next month. Really? I think oh, so. Yeah. Okay, we get to watch um, Geralt. 
Henry What's Cavill. His name? Henry Cavill running around and swat at things with a big old silver sword. Alex, mm. on that note, mm. that's the episode. Any ending thoughts for the audience? I really want to go play some Destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, I do too. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> if you liked that, please head over to patreon.com slash easyachievers. Give us a buck. Helps us out so much. You have no idea. Show support. Shows us that you like the content. Uh, if you have any gripes, any uh, conversations, any ideas, shoot us over on Twitter. Anything. I'm at EVM9000. He's at Cravey Slipskater. Give us a heads up. Ask a question. If you have anything to talk about, give us a heads up. Alex? Yes. I think that's it. Is it? Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.